Your choices can predict your future. I like the way you are nodding your head. You are following me. Your choices can do what? Predict your future. So if we look at the choices you are making every day, I don't need to be a prophet. I can tell you what you will become. Spend your life. Like our sister was saying when she was doing the spoken word, I was so blessed. Where is that young lady? Where is the lady that did spoken word? I was so blessed. Maybe because I'm into the creative arts. I was so blessed. Were you not blessed? Or you don't know what I mean by spoken word? She was wearing black and black. And then she was saying some powerful things. And she's coming. Where is she? The Lord bless you. Your voice... Your voice is going to get stronger. You see? While you were doing that thing, I saw that nations will open. Yeah. Hmm? And the Lord will put an anointing on your tongue. Yeah. Men will listen to you and their hearts will be, will be pierced with the word of God. Yeah. Great salvations will come from your speaking. Yeah. The Lord anoints you. In the name of Jesus. Now she was talking about sitting alone and watching pornography. And she threw her phone. If you give yourself consistently to pornography, I can predict your future. It's just a matter of time. You will become a slave. Give yourself consistently. Keep choosing worldly music. I can predict your future. Join your friends to be misbehaving anyhow. I can predict your future. Your choices will reveal your future. Number three thing you would have learned about choice during these three days is that choices are like seeds. Every choice you make is a seed. You sow it into the earth. You sow it into the spirit. You sow it into your life. So every time you are faced with two options and you choose one, what you have done is that you have planted a seed into your future. Some will germinate immediately. Some it might take 15 years. The first time somebody gave me a pornographic magazine, I was 10 years old. How old was I? I can't hear you. How old was I? How old are you? You are 10. I was exactly your age. How old are you? Ten. I was exactly your age. How old are you? Eleven. So you are older than you are older than how I was that time. Not older than me now. <laughs> Ten years old. A friend, a friend, gave me a pornographic magazine, and then I looked at it. It didn't take more than fifteen, twenty seconds. It took me 15 years to be delivered. 15 years. To say, ah, I'm free. 15 years. That's how long. Because your choices are what? They are seed. So as you walk out of this conference and you make a choice, you make a choice. Just know that you are planting that seed into your future. Either it will become a, a tree of life or it will become a tree of what? Death. Because the believer is alive. The unbeliever is what? Dead. Brethren, I'm saying this to say to you that these two lines will never cross. So the way we determine right or wrong, good. And by the time you read through the Bible carefully, God is always crying, be ye separate. Be ye what? Preach it to a teenager by your side. Say this year, after this conference, for the rest of your life, be separate. Let the world, preach to your teenager, let the world, See your difference. See your light. Experience your Jesus. That's how a Christian lives. 
So if you look at it carefully, in the Christ line, you have lawful. This person obeys the laws of God. They are controlled by the laws of God. Those laws affect what he watches, affect who his friends are, affect how she dresses, affect what she loves, affects how she relates with her parents. The laws of God. What is the second thing after righteous? What is the next thing on your table? Light. This one is a carrier of light. What's the next thing under your table? Christ. This one has Christ living in his spirit. What's the next thing under your table? Temple of God. So when you meet him, he's a mobile house of the presence of God. Are you with me? He's the temple of the living God. Paul said, can I take what is God's and join it to a harlot? You are the temple of the Lord. He said, God forbid. So when you find a teenager that is masturbating, it's because the teenager does not know I am the Lord's house. When you find a teenager that can sit down, my parents have left the house, then they go and bring out, they go and bring out uh, 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 a strange movie and they are watching it. Imagine this thing I'm about to tell you. You are the house of the Lord. It means that wherever you are, the Holy Ghost is there. Jesus is there. God the Father is there. Imagine sitting down watching naked video and the Holy Ghost is with you. Are you here? You and Holy Ghost. Ah. You and Holy Ghost. See, there is nothing wrong with it. Not Temple of the Lord. Can Holy Ghost watch that thing with you? That thing that you have in your phone, can Holy Ghost watch it with you? When your parents have gone, then you, then you put twer, 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 twer. You are Holy Ghost. You are Holy Ghost. If you are not the temple of the Lord, you become a temple. What's the opposite there? Idols. Idols. So before we begin to prepare to pray, to pray because we are going to pray. Ask yourself, who are you carrying? Is it, have you become a mobile house of idols? Or you are carrying Jesus? Jesus. You see, brethren? Satan knows that if you don't make this separation early, he will damage you early. I had to bend my head at some point while Pastor Jude was leading prayers because I was crying. You know why I was weeping? My entire life flashed before my eyes. I'm a product of God's mercy. Why should I even be the one standing here to preach to you people? Mercy. Satan, bro, how old are you? Eh, you're 15. I don't know why I'm interested in you. Every time I look at you, I seem to see light. God wants to do great things with your life. Have they told you before? I'm seeing it. Great things with this your life. If you hear this teaching I'm saying to you, you will not make my mistakes. Eh? You see, separation makes you powerful in the hand of God. Because the more separated you are, the more you can host God. Bro, Satan damaged me early. I got into boarding house when I was eight. Yes. I wrote primary six exam from primary four. And passed. And they said, go to boarding house. I went to boarding house at eight. A senior walked into my net in the night eh? and dragged me to his bed. I was eight years old and homosexually abused me. I was eight. He did things to me that he now I'm ashamed. I, I feel pain. I feel 
If not that, if not that, I am a candidate of mercy. I still feel as if, why did God allow this thing happen to me? I was eight. All kinds of things made me do all kinds of things. I was shaking like a leaf. I was afraid. I was bigger than me. Many years my senior. I was in GSS 1. He was in SS 3. When I went to school, the last set of people, because originally, you may not be believe, but ask your parents. Originally, when you finish class 5 in those days, you now go to what is called standard 6. You do an extra 2 years. I met the last set of those people. So in my, in my, in my school, I was in a school called Government College Ugeli. Government College Ugeli. So while other students wore white on white, those higher students who had finished but needed to do extra years wore white with brown. I met the last set. He dragged me in there. I was weak. I was powerless. You know what Satan did? He damaged me. I was just eight years old. Eight. You see, what, what, what I want to do this morning, eh? while I was praying, God kept telling me he wants to heal broken souls. Damage me. By the time I was 10, I was introduced to porn. By the time I was 12, I had my first sexual intercourse. The lady I slept with was 27 years old. Yes. Yes, I was 12. So here I am. Father, nowhere to be found. My mother was raising four children by herself. Laboring. Trying to bring us to know Jesus the best way she could. But here I was damaged. Damaged. Every time I tried to reach for Jesus, pull me back. Every time. It was almost... <laughs> I'm stronger than him. I'm stronger than him. Every time I tried, Egypt will be dragging me back. You can't escape. There were times in my room by myself, I will cry. Help me, Jesus. That's how immorality became a part of my life. And you know the funny thing? I could not tell anybody. You see, dear teenager, dear child, this morning, this is what the Holy Ghost told me to come and ask you. Even if you cannot tell anybody, will you not tell Jesus? Will you not tell Jesus? Because you see, is Satan succeeds in breaking your soul early hmm? you can become 55 with a broken soul some of you see it with your fathers any small thing he has slapped your mother it's not him his soul is broken he's a broken man some of you see it with your mothers they shout they treat your fathers anyhow your house there's no peace is because two broken people are now married. They didn't have an opportunity of a teenager's conference where they could come out and say, ah, oh, Jesus, even if I have never told anybody, please, I'm broken. Heal me. I was in a teenager's, God bless you, brethren, sit down, sit down, sit down. I was in a teenager's conference many years ago. Many years ago. Many years ago. And then, I was teaching something around this area. I was talking about covering your sin and exposing secret sin. And then when it was time to pray, I stood at the edge like I like standing normally. And then I was just praying, calling people to the altar. A young girl came. She was 12 years old. i never forget it. It's etched on my memory. 12 years old. And she held my leg. You know how the protocol, as I started moving, he got up. You know protocol people? One of them ran and they held her. 
I said, leave her alone. She was crying. That kind of cry that Kata is coming from the nose. Crying. Uh -uh. So I bent. I said, beloved, what is the issue? She screamed from her soul. He will not leave me alone. Uh -uh. He will not leave me alone. He will not leave me alone. Uh -uh. So I said, take her to the corner. They found out that when her mother leaves the house, there's a man in the compound. He was 27, I'll be 28. He will drag her into his room. And sexually abuse her. She had lost her virginity. He had touched her in all parts. She was traumatized. She had never told anybody. But that day, she heard the voice of God and she made a choice. I will rather, rather tell Jesus than remain broken. If only, you see, that's why I am, I am vehement against the way church is run now in modern day. It angers my soul. I used to go to church hoping that somebody would tell me to tell Jesus. And the preacher was telling me about breakthrough. How money is coming. And I was a broken boy. 